welcome to the second video publishing today on the channel. The Saucony Fast Twitch 8 full review, finally. I've been running in this shoe for three months now, three months, but the reason it took so long to get a full review out for the shoe is that I don't have 50 miles in the shoe, and you know how I always like to put at least 50 miles into a running shoe before a full review. Well, I slowly, re I eventually realized that, wow, it's gonna take me a long time uh, to put 50 miles into into the Fast Twitch 8 because it's my wor it's one of my workout shoes. It's not a middle distance shoe. It's I will never really run more than three to four, maybe five miles in the shoe at one time. That's how I'm looking at the shoe. So anyway, thank you for your patience if you are waiting for a long time for the full review of this Saucony Fast Twitch 8. And yes, it's affordable. Uh, just like the title says, it's an affordable, tempo, upbeat, uh, You, I will even say track workout type of shoe. Some specs, here we go. 18 millimeter stack height in the heel, 14 in the forefoot, so a four millimeter drop for the shoe. 6.4 ounces on the on the scale for weight, uh, 183 grams, okay? So there's the conversion for you outside the US, and uh, that's a pretty good weight. I must say, not, you know, I think it has potential to lose a little more weight, and I'll be curious to see what the Fast Twitch 9 weighs at some point, uh, but that so far, I'm feeling like, okay, they did a solid job making this shoe lightweight. And through the upper, it's an engineered mesh through the upper here. Uh, very breathable. I could see this being a great shoe for hot summer workout days on the roads and the track, but especially the roads. Uh, and then for the, remember I said this in the first impression video, the tongue. They nailed it. Saucony, you nailed the tongue. It's like they actually put some really good thought. And this is the tongue of the shoe, as many of you know. So this lays right on top of your foot. And it basically helps protect your foot from the lacing system. So the lacing system gives you that lockdown feel. But sometimes laces can dig into the top of your foot. Not in this shoe, not in this shoe. They have some extra built-in padding, but not too much, just enough. And especially right here at the top of the tongue, where I remember I'm running into some major issues in the Nike Vomero 14, uh, it's right through, I have some major pain. I can't even wear the shoes anymore. I just have some major pain because of the laces basically cutting into the top of my, my foot. Uh, but not in the Fast Twitch 8. Great job, Saucony, really putting some time. Not even to, I can't even, it's hard to film for you, but I'll do my best. But basically, they even have a little flare out here on the side of the tongue that, uh, again, just wraps around your foot oh so nice. It gives you a really comfortable, uh, secure feel when you're lacing up the shoes. So kudos to Saucony for that. And just so you know, there is a medial post through the midsole to help with mild over pronation so that is in there and yes it is a eva foam through the midsole it's feeling snappy uh yeah it just it feels snappy um i do i would like to i mean honestly i would like to race a 5k i haven't done that yet but i would like to race a 5k in this shoe just to see how it goes at basically all out effort. I haven't taken it at all out effort yet, uh, just in workout. So it would be fascinating to see how snappy it actually is in a race environment. And through the outsole, Saucony is putting in their own exclusive, uh, they call it their power track rubber. And I am, I'm loving it on the roads, like really nice grip. What it, you know what it compares to the continental rubber in the Adidas Audios 4 lineup. Just that nice, you don't feel any slipping and uh, it not only is it traction, but it's grip. And if it was gonna be, if it was raining on a race day in a 5K or a 10K, but especially 5K, I would grab for this shoe over many others that I have. So anyway, good job again, uh, Saucony, for this outsole, uh, for this pattern that they've laid out here on the outsole. It's all lending itself to a good solid grip on the roads. And for comfort, it's comfortable. Not the most comfortable shoe, but it's comfortable. Again, mostly because of that great tongue uh, that they've put in this shoe. It just, oh, I, I'm gonna say it right now. This is the best tongue I've ever had in a running shoe that I can remember. Um, yeah, I think they just really, really nailed it. When that has, that leads to, it's not the most comfortable, let's say through the toe box. There's more comfortable shoes out there, but as far as on top of the foot, really, really nice. And a couple quick positives for the Fast Twitch 8. 
ground contact feel is on point. You feel united with the ground, with the road. You don't feel like you're rolling over or rolling an ankle. Uh, you just feel one with the surface you're running on. And then the heel counter. That's right, this is the heel counter, the back of the shoe that wraps around your heel. I really like a heel counter that's actually a little more aggressive, meaning it's gonna quote you know kind of press into my the back of my heel like I would like a nice lockdown in that heel uh, you got to be careful though uh, I would recommend if you're gonna consider the fast twitch 8 for a race you're gonna want to test out the shoe ahead of time to make sure the heel counter is not too aggressive to make sure it's not gonna basically dig into the back of your foot or your Achilles tendon and give you a blister. I've had no issue at all, uh, but I must say that heel counter is, it wraps really nice right around your heel. And a couple of quick drawbacks. I am feeling a little bit of scrunching up on the upper right here through the toe box, basically at the bottom of the eyelet chain right here when you're lacing up it just scrunches up for me maybe it doesn't for other users of the of the fast twitch 8 but uh and it's not a it's not an issue with performance it's more just a, a little bit of a nuisance i get a little scrunching up there uh, and again not a deal breaker at all and then one other drawback if you perceive it as a drawback is that the landing like it's a harder landing when you're coming down on a, on pavement but you would, I would rather have a harder landing than a mushy landing if I'm gonna be using this shoe for a race. And as far as a distance to race in this shoe, I would lean toward 5K, 10K. Um, I don't know if I would take it to a half marathon or a marathon. I'd probably look for a shoe that has a little bit more midsole, but there's some people who watch this vlog who have used this shoe for a marathon, the Fast Twitch 8, and they've set their PR in the Fast Twitch 8. So I'm not saying you can't, but I would probably lean more toward a little more stacked up midsole uh, for me. And for that score, we're gonna go with seven and a half. I almost thought about eight, but I'm, I'm gonna stick with seven and a half. It's, it's a great shoe, and especially at $65. That's right, that's the price point for the Fast Twitch 8 right now. And yes, it's available down below from Amazon. I've actually seen certain sizes at $45. So, uh, men's and women's. Now, not all sizes are available right now. Why? Because the Fast Twitch 9 is now out. And so, but that means the price of the Fast Twitch 8 is probably gonna continue to drop and drop. Oh, value, right on point and because especially you can use this shoe for workouts and for racing um it's like it's a it's one of those nice crossover shoes that i would use for both absolutely and so for my conclusion on performance for the fast twitch 8 i haven't raced in it yet so i can't speak in racing terms i would like to race a 5k in this shoe in 2019 we'll see if i get the chance to do that uh but snappy um You've, you're in control of the shoe. It's nice lockdown, very comfortable through the tongue, especially that tongue area on top of your foot. Uh, the heel counter is on point. Uh, the weight is, I, I, for, I foresee uh, that this shoe will lose weight in future iterations, meaning the, the weight will come down. It's not, it's not heavy, but it's 6.4 ounces in my sizing. So I, th I bet it'll go under six ounces at some point. And we're going to go with, I'm laughing a little bit. I had to think for a second. We're going to go with tongue. I keep talking about the tongue of the shoe. So we're going to go with tongue for keyword for this video. Thanks for hitting it up down in the comments below. And the question of the day, do you have your 5K or 10K road racing shoe picked out for 2019? And listen, even if you're in high school and you're getting ready for the state track meet or maybe college and you're getting ready for your track meets, listen, I am of the opinion that you should not take the entire, now listen to your coach, but I would not take the entire summer off from racing. So what does that mean? Probably a local 5k road race. So maybe, who knows, you know, maybe you're going to be in the, uh, in the department of seeking out a, a road racing shoe for that distance. So anyway, this is definitely a good option. Also, remember I raced the Cookie Chase 5k in the Reebok Float Ride Run Fast Pro. Well, my legs were kind of beat up after that race. Like I didn't realize how how sore and tired I actually was after that race. So I think the Fast Twitch 8 
is a good second option. It's not nearly, it's twice as heavy, but the midsole will help save your legs a little bit because you won't have quite as much pounding uh, in the legs as you're getting through that race effort. All right, thanks for watching video number two, Sockany Fast Twitch 8 in the books. It's a racing shoe, it's fast, and it looks pretty darn good to boot. See beauty, work hard, each other. Thanks for being here.